I clean the toilet with my husband's toothbrush. So my husband can be, and often is, a Ooh. He often makes assumptions about my actions, usually negative assumptions. So the bathroom was pretty gross, and so I decided I was going to spring clean the bathroom. And I'm meaning toothbrush cleaning cracks and crevices. Usually I have an old cleaning toothbrush, but they were missing. No biggie, I thought. I'll just use my husband's old flat and gross looking toothbrush. I had already bought him a brand new one a few days ago. So I thought it was time to downgrade his toothbrush. So that's what I did. I used that toothbrush in all sorts of gross spaces. I just happened to be rinsing his toothbrush out after having cleaned the toilet when he came into my room. He got really angry and asked why I had his toothbrush in hand. I was like, well, I bought you a new... He interrupted and yelled, put it back. I tried to persist in explaining and said, but I... He... That's my toothbrush. Me... Well, yes, I know, but I... He... Put it back. Me... I mean, I would put it back, but I... He... That's my toothbrush. Don't touch my toothbrush. Me... Well, yeah, I mean, but I... He... Put it back. By this point, I was flustered, upset, and angry. Like, why can't he just let me explain? I already bought him a new brush. I already used this one on the floor, bathtub, sink, and toilet. But every time I tried to tell him, he would interrupt. Frankly, I had already told him on multiple occasions to please let me at least tell him what I was doing and to please stop interrupting me and never letting me get a word in. I could have yelled and interrupted him like he kept doing to me, but instead I gave him what he wanted. And I was like, okay, fine. I put his toothbrush back and walked out. Frick him. He got what he asked for. Plus, I don't understand why he acted that way. If the roles were reversed and I walked in on him rinsing my toothbrush, I would have asked, what are you doing with my toothbrush? And then I would have listened to his answer. And when he said, oh, I got you a new toothbrush. I used this old one to clean. Then would have said, oh, okay. Thanks for getting me a new toothbrush. And that would have been the end of it. But no. He can't just seem to treat me kindly. So yeah, I could have persisted and told him, but his seemingly irrational anger made me feel some sort of way and I just felt like, F you, enjoy your toilet toothbrush. Why are you with this guy? This relationship sounds deeply unhealthy on a number of levels. You aren't wrong. You're the one kissing him, just the thought. Divorce. I'm 16 years younger than my older sister and when I was about 17, I found my sister, Linda, doing this to her husband's toothbrush and it wasn't an accident. He was cheating on her, and she found out, so she used the toothbrush to clean the toilet. Tom never knew. I asked why she did something he would never know about, and she just said, I know. My ex would do that too. I would tell him, don't let the middle of my sentence get in the way of yours. I regularly just swap out my husband's toothbrush and don't discuss it first. E-D-G-A-F, because he's both an adult and a decent human being. This relationship doesn't sound like one worth fighting for if that's how he treats you. I purposely farted in front of a guy at the gym because he wouldn't take no for an answer. So a few things. I go to the gym to work out and decompress. I don't see it as a place to be social. I wear large over-ear headphones. I was at the gym and just finished one of my sets for deadlifts when a guy walks over. This is something I'm used to despite how much I dislike it, but he starts talking to me and I'm able to pick up he's flirting. I'm polite and waiting for the proper moment to end the conversation. When he asks for my number, I decline. He keeps talking and going into the usual shtick of why not and come on. At that point, I'm very uncomfortable and also annoyed because my workout timer has already gone off and it's past time for me to start my next set. I put on my big girl pants and tell him he's making me uncomfortable and I just want to finish my workout. Does he leave? No. He keeps talking now, going on about how he didn't mean it like that and he's not a bad guy. No actual apology to be found. Now, during this entire interaction, I've had to fart. I was being polite and holding it in until he left, but seeing as he's not, I think, well, I know a way to get him to leave. As he's still talking, I let it go. It's silent, but rather smelly. It only takes about two seconds for him to catch a whiff. He stops talking and the face he makes is too much that I have to bite my lip to stop laughing. That's when he gives me a look of, are you serious? And then finally leaves. I'm left alone to finish my workout. I was hoping for a loud rumbly rip. Alas, silent but deadly is funnier. Chemical warfare I approve of. So good. The Geneva Conventions would like a word with you. A case of gone with the wind. He was blown away. You did give him the answer. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The ladies next biological evolution tool, rip till they quit. Congratulations, farting in self-defense is a ninja skunk move. A good revenge for a guy who is trying to ignore your boundaries and the fact that you clearly stated you weren't interested. Are you kidding? Dude, who was he kidding? Love this. Some dudes really need to learn not to be incels and that why not is not a response to someone declining of giving out their number. Nobody owes you anything and they don't need a freaking reason to give. My next move after gaslighting him would be to report him to the gym. What the F is he gonna do? Complain that someone farted near him? I left a dirt stain on a man's white Nikes because he wouldn't move his feet on a flight. I was flying home from a work trip on AA. Now on this flight, a man sitting sat next to me. He wasn't super tall, about average in height. He needed to go to the bathroom, so I got up to let him out and got up again to let him in. As I sat back down, my leg hits his. I looked down to see his leg about halfway into my aisle, leaving me with about a third of the space that I had. I'm thinking he's going to move. He's got plenty of space because he doesn't have a bag under his seat. 
but he keeps it there. I'm sitting side saddled in my seat at this point. I look at him, then at his leg, and then back at him. He blatantly stares at me, then pulls out his phone and just starts playing on it. So what I do is I lift my foot and place it over his foot, setting the dirty sole of my Converse's on what looks like his new white Nikes. Fabric ones too, not leather. He immediately whips his head up at me, and I, following his example, pulled out my tablet and started reading. He pulls his foot away and had a nasty attitude the whole plane ride, but I got my space back. I'm a tiny girl and I find that situations like this happen frequently because, and I'm assuming, they think she's so tiny, she doesn't need that much space. GTFO, I paid for my space just like you did. Sorry that happened to you. The fights are usually for the armrests. I've never heard of anyone encroaching into someone's foot space. I definitely step on them as well. This sounds very satisfying. These days I've learned to make sure to shove my leg over to the line as soon as I sit down and just hold it firm. It's very hard if you don't do it immediately to then move your leg back to the edge of your space. Face. Dude overplayed his hand there. When someone has a fresh white kicks on, that's like a dangling scrotum in a street fight. Lucky he backed down. Next step is pissing on him to assert dominance. I'm a sneakerhead and I only fly with beaters on to prevent this from happening. Good for you, OP. You definitely hurt his soul with that one. I planted bamboo all around my apartment building because my landlord sucks. I'm playing the long game on this one. So I live in a really cheap one bedroom apartment with my daughter who is now eight. We moved in four and a half years ago. My landlord promised me the two bedroom at a very reasonable rent price. Well, when that two bedroom became available, despite my income and ability to afford the rent price we had discussed, he told me he's not comfortable renting to someone on just one income, meaning a single mom. He knows. I make enough to cover the two bedroom for what he said he'd rent it to me for. Nope. Instead, he rented it out to this couple who sells drugs and makes their living that way. So I ordered bamboo seeds and three years ago, I planted them all over the building. From what I read, it takes up to five years for them to sprout and break ground. But in the meantime, they are forming extremely complex root systems underground which will make it nearly impossible for him to ever get rid of the invasive plant. Frick him, I can't wait. Very petty. It's the sub. Studied ecology in school, and I'm cringing at the invasive spread. A relative planted bamboo on each side of the garden. Apparently it grew beautifully, looked amazing. Then they decided to remove the bamboo, to find the ground was like digging through concrete. That's how extensive the roots were. They had to employ people to remove it. Think it was a big job and lots of money. Be careful with how much you spread this information. In some places, bamboo is considered invasive and is quite illegal to plant because of the potential to damage concrete and foundations. You likely have nothing to worry about, but just in case, I thought I'd say something. Bravo! Japanese knotweed is far worse. In the UK, planting it is classified as an environmental crime. I know all about bamboo. My neighbor had planted some and it's taken off like wildfire. That stuff is super hard to get rid of. Bravo to you for your patience and planning. Another good one is yucca. I now have a hatred for these damn things. I dug out roots three by three and one foot deep and it came back the next year. My ditch is still full of them. That's what I'm talking about. Well freaking done. What your landlord did is super illegal. Something tells me the landlord isn't too concerned about the legality of well, anything, really. I commend your pettiness. For anyone reading and considering, please use mint instead. It's just as frustrating to deal with, but it isn't anywhere near invasive. The root systems also don't spread to innocent people very easy. It's just a more targeted attack that doesn't hurt the environment as much. So you like to throw stones at passing cyclists? Prepare for the fright of your young life. This happened around 2010. I was cycling around Herringay Green Lanes, where I lived at the time. The area is gentrified now, but at the time it was considered to be a bit rough by London standards. Those familiar with the area know that there are narrow alleyways that connect up all sides of the roads off of green lanes. So I'm cycling past one of these alleyways and see a group of rowdy kids messing around inside the alley. There are four of them, aged maybe 11 to 12, making a lot of noise as kids do. As I pass them, they all go quiet, sensing that something is up. I shoot them a look over my shoulder and catch one of them throwing a stone at me, which bounces off my back. This is followed by an explosion of laughter and jeering. Now I remember being a kid and the lengths that kids go to entertain their friends. To be honest, I wasn't even that mad. But in that moment, I decided to make this a teachable moment for that little bastard and to make sure he will never forget me. So I pretended to lose my mind. I tossed my bike to the road, turn and sprint at them full speed. To quickly cover the 10, 15 meters between us at the same time, I scream in pretend rage and wind my arm back. Like I'm about to deliver a WWE haymaker and end a young life or two. They barely have time to register what's going on. Three of them scatter like cockroaches, but the one who threw the stone freezes in his tracks. He kind of just collapses against the wall with his arms outstretched, babbling and begging for mercy. I put my face right next to his and whisper, I'm only joking, kid. The kid blinks for a second and then promptly starts to wail loudly, like he's carrying the burden of the world on his little shoulders. I walked away feeling like I had done the world a small service. What are your thoughts? Was this justified or too much? If that were my kid being an ass, I wouldn't have any problem with you doing this to him. You did fine. Justified. Perfect. And a lesson they will likely 
won't soon forget. You did the right thing, IMO. When I caught kids throwing rocks at my dog, I lost it too. I lectured them about the dangers of making dogs think they have to defend themselves and that they were lucky my dog had some restraint and didn't bite them. I didn't know my mom had her him out and not put him on his rope. After yelling at them for a bit, I made them come up and pet my dog nicely to undo some of the socialization damage they've been causing. I told them I know where they lived and if I ever caught them being anything other than nice to my dog, I was going to go over to their house and find them. Never saw them again. Little shits realizing they aren't invincible makes them better people. Petty revenge. Best served with mock rage that made a kid cry. I like that tactic. Bet he had to go shake some poo out of his pant legs after that scary encounter with a madman. Honestly, sometimes kids need the stuff scared out of them to realize that what they're doing is wrong. 10 years later, revenge on mother-in-law for Christmas dinner. About 10 years ago, I was invited to Christmas dinner at my mother-in-law's house. Mother-in-law is an entitled man-hater and treats my wife like her own personal servant. Sit down for dinner and there's absolutely nothing I can eat. Not just won't eat because I don't like it, but all the foods that give me serious GI distress. Her attitude was that a guest should just eat what they are given. I pointed out to wife that when she comes to my parents' house for dinner, my parents go out of the way to make sure that they make something she will eat. My wife just doesn't like any red meat. Not can't eat it, but just doesn't. My parents always make sure there is another option for her. My wife still says, well, her mother has a point. Yeah, the point is she is rude, man-hating Ooh. Last night she came over, wife was at work until after dinner, so I purposely made something my mother-in-law hated. My daughter's favorite meal is sirloin steak, so I got to look like the doting father. Then I asked my mother-in-law if she wanted some. She hates sirloin steak, so she didn't eat it. I politely said, oh, you should have told me you didn't eat steak. Revenge in this case was a dish served warm. Should have said, it's rude for guests not to eat what they're served. Isn't that what you told me? Revenge is served medium rare. For Christmas dinner, she wouldn't make something you could eat and your wife sided with her. She deserved much worse from you than a steak dinner. A guest should just eat what they are given. What? I was raised that as a hostess, it is my role to ensure an invited guest's comfort is a priority. Even most uninvited guests to a degree. Is that not the norm? I've seen so many attitudes like this and it confuses me. I feel like everyone missed the fact that he waited 10 years for this petty revenge. Loving your work. 10 years in a petty grudge is some amazing pettiness. How many men does one have to hate to be dubbed a man-hating bitch? One, two, five? Not sure what bit makes her man-hating unless it's not in the story. Just kind of sounds generically horrible and hostile from the description here. Rude man-hating bitch. I'm sure it has nothing to do to your misogyny. If I was this guy's MIL, I'd be sure to fix him a nice cup of shut the fuck up and hope he ended up on the toilet for 48 hours. Steal my parking space? Enjoy the fine. Me and my girlfriend started renting an apartment in August. My girlfriend had a few weeks left of her job, a city over, and due to that, my girlfriend needed a car. Since she worked late evenings, it would be almost impossible for her finding a parking space close our apartment at 9 p.m. Since all parking spaces would be filled at 4.30 or so. We both decided to pay $90 a month for the parking garage under our apartment. After a few weeks, my girlfriend started working closer to our home and the need for a car disappeared. The lease wasn't up on the parking space, so we decided to use it as a reserve parking space in case friends or family came over. Since the parking space is usually empty, people have started parking in our space. We usually call parking security and they put a fine on the car. This one time I chose to be nice, a blacked out BMW was parked in our space and I found out who owned it. I called them with the intention of asking them to move the car politely. The owner of the car was a 30 year old man. I rang him up and he picked up the phone. Silence. He was silent for a solid five seconds before I hesitantly said hello. He responded, who is it? In an annoyed voice. Hello, my name is Dronectus. Dronectus who? From what company? I'm not from a company. I just live in the same apartment complex as you and I was wondering, go the frick away. And then he hung up the phone. I then called parking security and 10 minutes later, there was an $80 fine on his car. I tried calling him again to tell him that there was a fine on his car and a tow truck would be there to pick it up later that evening if he didn't move the car from our spot. But when I called him up, I got a very warm and pleasant response. Stop freaking calling me. And he hung up. Later that evening, I saw a nice blacked out BMW on the back of a towing truck. I got paired in a group project with my bully. So I made her fail. This happened in high school around 12 years ago. There was a girl, we'll call her Alex, that used to bully me nonstop. Alex and I actually used to be friends in elementary school, but out of the blue, she decided she was too cool for me. So she felt the need to bully me. She used to whip coins at me on the bus and I'd get little welts. She'd have her male friends call me and ask me out as a joke. And she'd point and laugh at me in the hallway, which I thought only happened in movies because honestly, that one is pathetic. She made my life absolutely miserable. High school comes around and guess who has to sit next to her in Spanish class? Me. And guess who sat behind us? Her two best friends. 
I felt so small and invisible. She would even have her friends pick on me, like throwing spitballs or ripping the pins out of my hair and throwing them across the room so I had crazy hair. I got so fed up, but was too shy to speak. The teacher had us do a group project and she picked teams of four. So you work with whoever sat near you. And of course I had to work with her and her two best friends. I tried asking them for help and they would stare at me and continue their conversations with each other. So I had to do the entire project by myself. I remember looking over at my teacher and I can see the empathy in her eyes, but she didn't say anything. It wasn't a major project, but we had to come up with some script in Spanish and all of us had to speak in front of the whole class. Since I wrote the whole thing, I basically made her lines make no sense and I didn't follow any of the rules for her. We had to use certain words and tenses and I didn't include any of that. In the middle of her speaking, I think she realized what I had done, but she was in too deep to stop. The teacher raised her voice at Alex, and I don't remember exactly what she said, but her tone definitely implied that Alex was an idiot and that she can expect a terrible grade. The best part was the public humiliation in front of the whole class, and there were definitely some snickers across the room. This part was just an added bonus, but I haven't thought of Alex in so long until now, I decided to look her up on social media, and she posts this lavish life on the beach all the time with her expensive Jeep and Louis Vuitton bags. Then I Googled her name and there's public records of her getting sued multiple times because she can't pay her bills, credit card companies, apartment complexes, etc. So it gives me a chuckle knowing her life is just for show and she can't actually afford her rent. No hate to anyone that's struggling financially, but when you're buying designer items, maybe worry about paying your bills first. Brilliant. As a teacher, I was so happy when Google Docs became the norm because it tracks everything and it's so easy to see who is putting in the work and who is not. And I will give different grades to each student in the group if they are not putting in the work. Well played. Nice job in giving your bully the script to drop her grade. Hopefully her buddies got the same kind of grade. Group projects are the worst. Very nice to make her fail without you failing though. You could further the petty revenge by posting those public records to her SM while asking if that Jeep and LV bag were the reason she couldn't pay her rent. Then start a stopwatch to see how much time elapses before she deletes your comment. So clever that you could fail her while still getting a good grade yourself. I can see the empathy in her eyes. The teacher humiliated her in front of the whole class. The teacher got in some revenge as well. Bullies are often lazy, ghosting through life while making others' lives horrible deliberately. It's great when they learn abruptly that most high school status and social skills are worth poop as an adult. Force me to come in with the flu? Everyone's now sick. Back about 15 years ago, I worked in an assisted living facility. Not only did I work there, but I lived on site as the night manager. The company was owned by a family and managed by a fellow that thought he was hot stuff. After a few months of working there, I came down with the flu. I had a high fever, body chills, you name it. I was sick. I tried to call out, but my manager told me to come in. He didn't care how sick I was. I did tell him what a horrible idea it was for someone as sick as me to be around vulnerable populations, such as the elderly, but he didn't care. Threatened my job and everything, so I dragged myself in. I was there for a few hours and must have snotted, sneezed, and breathed my plague breath on everyone and everything. Eventually, I was sent back to my rooms after some residents complained that I was basically a zombie. A few days later, and feeling much better, I heard from my manager. I managed to get the whole office staff and other residents sick. He told me he regretted making me come in given how sick I was and how I got everyone else sick. I told him I was sick. Next time, tell your manager you be right in after you call the health department about fear of repeat of last time. If my parent was in that facility and got the flu or an even worse died, I would have sued the crap out of that manager assuming I knew what really happened. He regretted it, but did you get an apology? Yes. He felt really dumb after he got so sick from me coming in, said he regretted making me come in. He was a bit of a jerk. There is no heroism in going to work and infecting colleagues. It is utterly stupid and dangerous. Caring for elderly people is no joke. You should call the health department on him. I had a similar experience, but the manager heard me saying I had the flu on the phone and mocked me, thinking it was just a cold. The week after, everyone was off. I'll never understand why some managers don't take this stuff seriously. I've seen how things get passed around like crazy in offices, and it can really mess people up. It's so sad. I pretended to be a Satan worshiper to make my manager quit. A few years ago, when I was around 20 or 21, I worked at a ski resort. During my two-year tenure there, I took on a variety of tasks before setting my sites on full-time year-round employment. This narrowed my options down to one role, janitor. I was actually okay with that. I'd seen the cleaning crew, mostly people around my age, jamming out to music on their headphones while they worked. The idea of listening to music all day while getting the job done appealed to me. Plus, it came with a small raise. After a quick interview with the manager, Gary, I was hired on the spot. However, my first day brought a surprise. Gary had been caught drinking on the job and was involved in some sexual assault allegations, so he was let go. For a few months, we were without a manager, but the most senior worker, a nice older Hispanic lady, kept things running smoothly. She wasn't promoted to manager because of her limited English, which seemed unfair. It was at this job that I met Jared, who quickly became my best friend. Eventually, they brought in a new manager named Fabi, who was hired for her experience and bilingual abilities. Jared and I made up the night crew, while Fabi and the rest of the staff, all middle-aged women, worked the day shift. 
Our schedules would overlap for a few hours, especially during the resort's frequent events like weddings that would last until midnight or later. Jared and I faced some challenges, particularly with cleaning duties during these events. We were the only ones willing to work late, which meant tackling the women's restroom restocking cleanup. This was tricky because the restrooms were designed with individual rooms, making it hard to know when they were empty. We couldn't close them off completely, and the signs we put up indicating male workers were cleaning were often ignored, leading to several awkward encounters one incident involved a drunk woman who tried to grope Jared. We reported it to Fabi, but she dismissed our concerns. After that, we decided not to clean the women's room until the events were over and the building was empty. But if an event ran late, we simply went home at the time indicated on our schedule, which infuriated Fabi, resulting in the daytime crew having to do cleanup. I want to note that other than Fabi, we had a good relationship with everyone else on the daytime crew. They understood that we didn't feel comfortable in the women's restroom during events. They also did not like Fabi because she never cleaned. She would just watch them do it. Tensions with Fabi escalated over other issues. Jared, who was disabled and had been a cleaner longer than I had, earned less. When he spoke up, Fabi justified the pay disparity by pointing to my longer tenure at the resort. HR sided with her, and she began to openly resent us. Any minor mistake we made was met with her yelling at us in front of the department during meetings. When I tried to get my brother a job, Fabi called it nepotism and rejected him, yet she hired her own son, who was gay. Behind closed doors, she expressed the day shift hopes that her son would change which suggested to some of us she might have tried abusive ways to alter his orientation. Fabi couldn't fire us. Jared and I were the only ones willing to cover night shifts and events, and her boss liked me, though not Jared as much. When Jared took time off after a family bereavement, they used it as an excuse to let him go. I later found out that he told Fabi about the death. She, in turn, did not pass that info along to her supervisors. It was tough with Jared no longer working there, so I began mingling more with the day staff. That's when I discovered Fabi's darker side. She was stalking her ex both online and in person, even enlisting staff to help her after she was blocked. Armed with the knowledge of her superstitious nature, I decided to play a bit of petty psychological warfare. I started setting our storage closet's numeric lock to 0666 and had friends in other departments do the same when I was off. One day, after typing 666 into the work computer's username field, Fabi accused someone of hacking and refused to use it for days. When she began rummaging through office trash for scraps of information about my activities, I escalated my tactics. I drew occult symbols and scribbled faux satanic chants on papers with my left non-dominant hand, deliberately discarding them in the trash where she would find them in rummaging. It worked. Fabi grew visibly unnerved and would follow me around. My only way of losing her was entering the men's restroom. Yes, she patronized us about not going into the women's restroom, but she, herself, wouldn't enter the men's restroom. To avoid her, I adjusted my hours so that we'd only cross paths briefly. My grandma passed away during this time, so I took a few weeks off of work. When I got back, Fabi was gone. I later learned she had made an employee perform a dangerous task, which resulted in a near serious injury leading to her dismissal or resignation. Although I do like to think I might have played some part in her decline. Yeah, but now you've disappointed Satan. This is genius. I hope I never need this, but I'm totally stealing it if I end up in a situation where this may be useful. Fabi wasn't being fabulous. As they say, F around and find out. You did good. Good! You forgot to make up the bit where you discovered her superstitious nature. You jump right from stalker to leaving hints about Satan everywhere, but don't explain why it's such a big deal for her. You have a good story, but it needs a second draft. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day and peace out.